on everybody in a community, you know, that's why it's a community. Puerto Morelos is unique in itself. We all love this place. We are very deeply engraved in, in this beach, in this reef, and with the people. Once you start engaging in its nature, you fall in love. People live here because they choose to. There's a very traditional way of living. And I also see it changing in many ways. I'm from Puerto Morelos and I'm a diving instructor and I also work in conservation. My name is Chetina Cantu. I am a dive instructor. Imagine a world where there's no noise. You are suspended underwater. You're there and there's nothing else around you other than nature. I was always encouraged to be respectful towards nature. My mom worked in environmental conservation and my dad was a fisherman. We always have known a community that is very fierce in protecting not only the reef but the other ecosystems like the mangroves. I 
I learned a lot growing up here because I learned from scientists and biologists and oceanographers and people that were very passionate about protecting those resources. Diving is usually a very leisurely activity, but very often the information about marine biology, about the environment and its conservation is not transmitted to divers. We have the reefs very close. It's a kilometer and a half away from our coast. We have had to adapt to all the impacts that tourism has in our community. And with that comes the impact to the natural resources that we used to enjoy so freely. When Hurricane Wilma hit in 2005, it was probably the strongest storm that has ever been witnessed in, the, in Puerto Morelos. It probably took us maybe five months to a year to recuperate. So it was very devastating for a lot of businesses. They closed down that year and they never opened again. And after that, the village was sort of locked in because the mangrove flooded and no one could go in or out. The community was working very strong, not only to rebuild, but also to build like a network to be able to inform the families of people living here that their relatives were were fine. We have never had a project to go and check the reefs after a devastation. With the training that we're doing, forming the brigades to be able to restore our reefs after a hurricane, the community becomes more aware and more united. The community will benefit by having people who have been trained and are prepared to react after a hurricane. The training that we're doing, it brings together the traditional knowledge and the formality of the protocols that have been created. If the protocols would be implemented with no local people, you would find that you're missing a lot of pieces in the puzzle because you wouldn't know which parts of the reef you can work in or you wouldn't know where it floods after a storm. So that kind of thing has to be done by someone who knows the area. Okay. We are dragging someone behind the boat who is in the water and that person is inspecting the bottom so we are uh, communicating 
with the people over here who are writing down the coordinates and the, um, what the bottom contains. So we're classifying in uh, number one for sandy bottom, number two for seagrass meadows, or number three for coral structures. And that way we can know which points belong to, uh, to coral specifically. In the training we have people from all backgrounds and we have someone who is a park ranger and we have people who are biologists and people who are diving instructors and others who are technical divers so I think the, the knowledge really comes together and this is what ultimately will be the success of the project that we're all all able to bring something to the brigade. By doing the training and belonging to the brigade, we can work towards re-enabling uh, the resource that is the reef for the economic health of, of the community. When we have a storm and the reef is damaged, the main income for the community is, is cut because people cannot vacation here anymore and then the boat captains don't have work and the sailors don't have work and the dive guides don't have work. So it, it brings the community into a very difficult state of an economic crisis. There's a lot of instability after a hurricane and I think the training really gives us the opportunity to put that engine to work again. So as soon as the reef is recovering and the time for recovery is shorter, then our work is also ensured afterwards. This kind of projects help everybody to work together. That's really important and it helps the community, especially divers. Divers are, have not been in the past taken in consideration of being able to help uh, the park. Now we are being part of it to help them in this project. So uh, I am very happy to participate in it. And for my own personal experience is to learn uh, and to see how, how, how to help Mother Nature and the coral reefs. I am hopeful, but I'm also eager to see how governments and communities will work in more integrative solutions to the problems that we face. I'm a local, so as I said before, I can collaborate with these organizations and also be a link with the rest of the community and try to encourage young people um, to get involved and to, to have a, like an active role in the conservation and to erase that stereotype that if you're not a scientist, you cannot come and do conservation work.